So good morning to everyone. And can you hear me well? Yes, we can hear you, Nuria. Okay, perfect. So thank you very much for the introduction. Um, as, as she introduced, my name is uh, Nuria Aguilera and I am the commercial director at Bluefish. And today we are going to introduce um, you about Cooley Finches and the products that we have uh, in order to do the analysis of coliphages in water. So, mm, one second that I will share my screen. So. Can you see the presentation in a full screen? No. No? Okay. So, second. Okay. I hope that now you can see it. So yes, we are going to start with a small uh, introduction. So why it's important to analyze coliphages. Here we have uh, some uh, virus outbreaks news from the last few years. Uh, we had one in very large in Greece in 2021, where more than 600 uh, people got sick. We, the most recent one was in, in Spain, in the north of Spain. Um, and all of these uh, outbreaks uh, were from water that was tested, was analyzed by the water utility, the laboratory, and it was approved to be used as drinking water or another uh, purposes. But at that time, the water was only tested for um, bacteria indicators. So bacteria indicators are a very good indicators, but just for the bacteria. So they don't provide information about a possible uh, viral contamination. So that is why it's really important to um, analyze uh, the coliphages or um, another viruses because bacteria cannot detect the presence of the viral pathogens as viruses are smaller than bacteria. They are more abundant and persistent than them in the environment. And one of the most important uh, things is they're more resistant to treatments. So in order to um, make sure that the water is safe for uh, drinking purposes, it's really important to, to analyze not only bacteria indicator, but, uh, but also viral indicator. And that is why the coliphages have been introduced in the new European regulations that we will discuss uh, later. So, but what are the bacteriophages? Bacteriophages are viruses that infect and replicate within the bacteria. And, um, they are one of the most abundant organisms on the planet. They are not harmful for humans. And the roles that play in the biosphere are to, in order to regulate uh, the bacterial populations, to provide the variability in the bacterial populations. And also bacteriophages play a really important role in the process of biotechnology. Within the family of bacteriophages, uh, we have different subfamilies and they are defined according to the host bacteria that they infect. Um, we mainly have the coliphages and within the family of coliphages, we have the somatic coliphages and the F specific. The difference is the somatic coliphages uh, infect the E. coli through the cell wall. And the most common host strains are the WG5. These are the um, E. coli that comes from the E. coli C, but is resistant to 
the nalidixic acid, that the nalidixic acid is an antibiotic used um, to remove the background flora. And for example, in America, as a host strain, they use the CM13. And the F-specific colifages, uh, the difference is that the bacteria is infected through the sex pili. And the most uh, important host strains that we have is the WG49, that is a salmonella, and the E. coli HS. Within the family of the um, bacteriophages, we also have the bacteria des fragilis, but um, we are not going to talk about them as we are not included in the in the regulations and also in, in, in the analysis for the common uh, quality control. So we were saying you know, the importance of testing the colifages in order to, to make sure that the water is safe. Here we are introducing uh, a graph with the colifage reductions through the treatment process in the um, in the graph we have on the on the left side we have the typical bacteria like and uh, the fecal coliforms e coli enterococci and in the right side of the graph we have typical um, viral pathogens like norovirus adenovirus and just in the middle we have the f coliphages and the somatic coliphages and as you can see the log reduction of the colifages are very similar to the uh, vital pathogens. So when we treat water and we uh, check the colifages and we see how the colifages have been reduced, we have a very important information about the uh, vital pathogens if because the reduction of the um, colifages are very similar of the viral pathogens. That is one of the reasons that colifages have been defined as the new indicator for viral contamination, but also for fecal contamination. Being an, an indicator, uh, it's important and that is why the different um, countries have introduced the colifages in the regulations. In 2020, two new European directives were approved, one for drinking water and one for reclaimed water. These two directives are currently being transposed in the different countries. Each country uh, is transposed differently, so not the, all the countries will not do exactly the same analysis or the same approach because what the European directives give us is just the minimum. In France, also, uh, they introduced the colifages for the analysis of biosolids. And as you can see, the co organization already introduced in, in 2017 the colifages in drinking water, reclaimed water, and direct potable reuse as a guideline, okay? And for example, in, in America, in North Carolina, has been um, using the colifages since 2011. So let's go to discuss very briefly about the European Directive, okay? So in, in December of 2020, the... Um, the the European Directive for uh, Drinking Water was approved. And it and what it says, the directive, is that somatic colifages must be analyzed as an operational parameter. So if we find um, colifages in raw water with concentrations higher than 50 PFU per 100 milliliters, we should um, analyze the colifages after the treatment to make sure that the colifages are completely removed. So the transposition of this uh, European directive, it will be different in each country. In Spain, for example, has been transposed uh, with more controls. 
So uh, it's been more restrictive than the European directive, but in other countries, it's been transposed exactly as the European, as the as it is in the European directive. And the another directive approved is the one for um, water reuse. So in that case, um, the European directive proposed to analyze the total somatic total colifages f specific or somatic colifages. So total colifages are the sum of the f specifics plus the somatic colifages. But usually the somatic colifages are the most abundant ones. So having the concentration of somatic colifages, you may know mainly the, the, the total because the f specific are in a very less concentration compared with the somatics. So the, the European Directive for Reclaimed Water indicates that when the water is going to be used for agricultural purposes in a class, class A water um, quality, so the water is going to be in contact with tomatoes, lettuce, different vegetables, the direct contact with the human consumption, the colifages must be analyzed and it must be analyzed before and after, and you should have at minimum log reduction of six. Okay, so that would be uh, the, 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 uh, the a, a brief uh, comments about the two European directives. So how we analyze the um, somatic colifages we have uh, different standards, but mainly in Europe, we use the ISO standard, but also um, in America, um, they have the US EPA standards, 1642 and 1643. The ISO standard that uh, explains how to analyze the colifages have four parts, is the ISO 10705, the part one is the analysis of the F-specific colifages. The part two is the enumeration of the somatic colifages. And the part three, it gives us uh, the information so how to validate our concentration method and provides some examples of concentration methodology. The main characteristics of the standard methods is, first of all, we need to prepare the biological material. After that, we would need to calibrate the medium and calibrate the host strain. And once that we have that, we can start the sample preparation. And once that we have the sample prepared, we can proceed with the analysis. The results are usually in 24 hours because we have an incubation time of 18 hours. So for this, uh, all steps, one important step is the sample preparation. And what we mean about the sample preparation? So depending on if we have water that we expect to have high contamination of bacteriophages or water that we expect to have low contamination. So the European directives um, give us the, the, the parameter, the, the, the maximum um, values of colifages in a hundred milliliters volume sample. So in samples like, um, such as potable water, drinking water, sometimes some reclaimed water, we should analyze a hundred milliliters volume sample. So in that case, we will need to proceed to do the sample concentration as using um, different methodologies like filtration procedure or uh, flocculation, but usually for um, drinking water, we will use the um, filtration method. But when we are analyzing uh, samples with uh, expected high bacteriophage concentration, the first thing that we need to do is we need to decontaminate the sample because if we don't contaminate, we will have some interference. In that case, as we're expecting high concentration, we'll analyze at one mil or up to five mil maximum. 
and the, um, the contamination will be performed using a, a filter that allows to pass all the bacteriophages and it will retain the uh, bacteria, the contamination that has our sample. So one that we have, um, the matrix that we want to analyze, we will use one type of sample preparation or another. And in order to give you an idea about the concentrations of the colifages in the different type of matrices, for example, in drinking water, we expect to have zero uh, concent um, co somatic colifages. But for example, in um, room water, we will have probably between 10 to the four and 10 to the five. So we will be analyzing one mil. And reclaimed water is a very tricky one because it depends on which reclaimed water you are analyzing. So you can have between zero to 10 to the three um, PFU per, um, per 100 milliliters. So you will be analyzing between one mil or a hundred mils, okay? And the same as the, as you can see in treated water, we also have um, between 10 to, 10 to the two and 10 to the four. So we will be analyzing one mil. So let's go to see what we have done at Bluefish in order to help the laboratories to perform the analysis of colifages. So Bluefish has developed two family of products. On the left, we have the Easy Kids. The Easy Kids in design for a fast and simple implementation of the standard methods. So what we have done is we prepare the different materials according or based to <clears throat> the standard methods. And once that you've received the, the, the kit, you can start doing the analysis. And the other, family of products are the rapid kits. This is a agar free and patented technology. So it's completely different. It's based on a color change. And the, the hands-on time is just 20 minutes compared to easy kits is around two hours. And the total time of the analysis, the incubation time, it's six hours, six hours and a half compared with the 18 hours of the uh, standard methods and the easy kids. So within the family of the easy kids, what we have developed is a process of life alive the biological materials required for the analysis of the colifages using the ISO or the US EPA methods. So this lyophilization allows to uh, store the material at minus 20 instead of minus uh, 80, like the uh, standard biological materials. And also what we, have, what we do is we have calibrated and prepare all the media. So all the package, once that you refit the package, you can start, you can proceed the analysis. Just you to understand all the steps that you will uh, avoid using the, the Bluefish products. No, So the preparation of the biological material and the calibration of the medium requires all of these steps, the preparation of the stock culture, the preparation of the work culture, the calibration. So all of these steps, all of these procedures are performed at Bluefish. So you don't need to do that. And also for the calibration of the E. coli. So one, one of the things that the ISO states is that you need to make sure that the E. coli have, are at higher than 10 to the eight concentration, the CFU per milliliter. So this um, part, uh, you don't need to do it because in our certificate, uh, it includes, so our material is prepared that once that you incubate the two hours, you have the, a concentration higher than 10 to the 8 of CFU per milliliter in the E. coli. So as well, all of these steps 
you will not need to do it. Within the family of the easy kids, we have products for the ISO and the US EPA and the somatics or F specifics regarding the US EPA. So let's go to see about the easy kids. So in the easy kids, uh, we have the full kit that contains everything, but also we have the option to buy the biological materials or the powder media. Okay. So regarding the full kits, we have two kits. The BP1601 that is uh, designed to analyze somatic colifages when we are expecting to have high concentration of these somatic colifages. The volume sample to be analyzed is between one mil and, and, and 10 mil. And this uh, kit is according to ISO. And now we will uh, show you how to perform the analysis using this, this kit. So as you can see, the kit contains a lot of small um, <clears throat> vials. So all the material that you need to perform the analysis except one material. So the ISO methodology is a double agar layer methodology. So you need to uh, perform two layers of MSA the first layer of MSA is the one that is not included in the kit. So you have two options. You can buy the Petri dishes, the 90 millimeter Petri dishes, as well as the MSA powder, or also the, the plates, the 90 milliliter, millimeter plates, sorry, with one layer of MSA. So once that you have that, plus the kit 1601, you have all the materials uh, required to perform the analysis. And the results of this analysis in PFU plug forming units per milliliter. Okay. And as we said, this methodology is according to the ISO. On the left side of the presentation, you have the, the summary of the procedure. But what we are going to do now is we are going to show you a video um, in how to perform the analysis a step by a step. So. So. What we need, what materials and equipment? The materials, we need the kit and what also the Petri dishes and the MSA, okay? Or the combination of those if they are already prepared. And the equipment that we need is the an incubator at 36, a water bath at 55, a boiling water bath in order to melt the semi-solid MSA, an incubator with shaking, so, this is an optional part. So it's very difficult to have uh, an incubator that has a shaking inside. So don't worry about that. And what you can do is you can uh, put the... Um, so this incubator with shaking um, is used to prepare dinacolum culture. Dinacolum culture is the mixture between the MSB and the E. coli. So... If you don't have an incubator with shaking, it's no problem at all. So you put your uh, MSB and E. coli inside the incubator and every 20 minutes, you shake the sample. Also, you will uh, require micro pipettes, the refrigerator or fridge at five degrees and a freezer at minus 20. The freezer at minus 20 is to store the biological um, materials. So you don't need to have a freezer at minus 80 because our biological materials are stable at minus 20. So as we said, first of all, we need to have the first layer of the MSA. And once that we have that, we start with our kit. The kit looks like that. We have a bag, metallic bag with a bacteriophage and the PBS a box with uh, the uh, vials with the E. coli WG5, the nalidixic acid that, as we said, the nalidixic acid is used to um, as an antibiotic. 
to remove the interference of the bacteria that could contain my sample. The uh, distilled water, the calcium chloride. The calcium chloride is used to improve the contact between the bacteria, the E. coli, and the bacteriophage. Sodium hydroxide to prepare the analgesic acid, some blanks, um, flask with the semi solid MSA, El Remeyer to MSB, and the empty tubes for the analysis, the test tubes. So this video is, is, is being made for um, training purposes. So it's important to always uh, perform a plank and a positive control in each batch of samples. So the first thing that we need to do is to prepare the inoculum culture. And in order to prepare the inoculum culture, it's, uh, we need to pre-warm the MSB Erlenmeyer. So once that the MSB Erlenmeyer has been has been pre-warmed, we will add our tablet of Lyophilize E. coli WG5 inside of the Erlenmeyer. We will allow 10 minutes for resuspension or rehydration, and we will put it in the incubator for two hours, two hours and a half with a shaking rotator or instead of shaking rotator, shaking manually every 20, 30 minutes. So that is really important. The in a clone culture uh, <clears throat> must be used the same day that is prepared, <clears throat> sorry. So if we are performing the analysis just after the two hours or two hours uh, and a half, of the incubation of the inoculum culture, we don't need to cool it. But if we prepare the inoculum culture and we are going to use it later um, in the afternoon, it's really important to cool um, the culture in a melting ice or refrigerator. And why it's important? Because two hours and two hours and a half after the incubation, we have the E. coli at the concentration higher than 10 to the eight. If we don't call it, it will be keep growing, 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 and it will not perform the analysis accordingly to the ISO, and we'll have some um, issues in the analysis, okay? So make sure that you call it if you're not going to use it right straight away. So in the meanwhile, our in, in a culture is in the incubator. We can start preparing the samples. First, we need to melt the semi-solid MSA in the boiling water bath. And it's really important to check that the agar is completely melted before it's used. Once that is melted, we will place it in a water bath at 55 degrees, and we will let them reach that temperature. Meanwhile, we will prepare our analytic acid. We have a vial with uh, powder analytic acid, water, and sodium hydroxide. So we will use 0 0.6 ml of the sodium hydroxide solution, and we will be at this solution in our vial of the analytic acid powder. <clears throat> We will um, shake it to mix it properly. And after that, we will add the 2.4 ml of distilled water in this mixture in order to have the uh, solution of 25 milligrams per milliliter of analytic acid. This solution can be stored in the fridge <clears throat> during months. So you can prepare it at the beginning and you have the, your bio prepare for the rest of the analysis. Once that the semi-solid is melted, we will supplement with the calcium chloride and the analgesic acid. We will add 0 0.14 ml of the calcium chloride. It's important to take in consideration that one um, flask or one tube of the semi-solid 
provides you uh, material for seven analyses. Okay, here in the video, we are just uh, analyzing three, the sample, the positive control, and the negative, but one, one tube is for seven samples. So we add our calcium chloride, And after that, we will supplement it with the analytic acid solution that we just prepared. And we will be adding 0 0.23 milliliters. So once that we the semi-solid has been supp supplemented, what we are going to do is we are going to distribute the semi-solid MSA supplemented in our test tubes. And for that, we will distribute in 2.5 mils of this mixture in each test tube. And once that uh, each tube that has the the semi solid must be placed very quickly in the water bath because we don't want that our uh, semi solid MSA to be solidified due to a decrease of the temperature. So meanwhile, we have our test tubes in our water bath. We will prepare our samples. So in order to prepare our samples, first we need to prepare our positive control. So in our metallic bag, we have a vial with a lyophilized Vx 174 and the bile with the PBS. In order to reconstitute our life allied uh, con positive control, we will add 0 0.5 mils of PBS in a bile. We will mix and we will add another milliliter more. I will mix again. And this positive control must be used on the same day as well. So we will allow 10 minutes for the resuspension. And after these 10 minutes, we can add our samples in our test tubes. And it will be as we are analyzing <clears throat> um, samples with high concentration of colifages, we will add one milliliter of the positive control that has been pre-warmed of the blank and of the sample, each sample in each test tube. So it's important to take in consideration that everything that we are mixing must be pre-warm. So our water sample must be pre-warm as well at 36 degrees. Okay, in, in, in that kit it's important, but we will see in the next kit that it's crucial that the sample is tempered properly. So now we have in our in a clump culture ready to be used. So we will add one mil of in our in a column culture in each test tube. And 
once that is added, we will mix it. We will, you will see once that she distributes the meal in each test tube. So now we will mix our test tube carefully. Okay, you will see that she mix it gently and we will pour our test tube on top of the layer of MSA. So as you can see, she's mixing very carefully and she will pour now on top of our MSA layer. We need to distribute evenly. So it's really important to allow the solidification in a horizontal pool place. And once that has been solidified in the cool surface, we will put in an incubator. And the incubation is performed at 36 degrees for 18 hours. It's important to not to stack more than six plates and the incubation must be, must be performed upside down. So after the incubation time, we will have our plates and as you can see, sorry, one second, that I just stopped the video. Okay. As you can see, we have a layer of the bacteria alone, and we have some plaques. These are the plaques that we need to count. Okay. So in our positive control, usually the plaques has the same size approximately because we are using um, the VX 174, but in your environment samples, you will have plaques, the different sizes, okay? So don't, 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 so you need to expect different sizes of plaques because it's bacteriophage, it's coliphage um, has different sizes, grow differently, okay? So once that we have uh, the plate, we will count our plaques and that would be the result in PFU per milliliter. And this is um, how to use the BP1601 that is designed for samples with high concentration of bacteriophages. The other kit that we have within the family of the easy kits is based on ISO and analyze and 100 milliliters volume samples because we are expecting very clean samples like drinking water. So as we explained before, when we are going to analyze sample, clean samples, we need to do a concentration step you know, in order to uh, have 100 milliliters volume into, into five uh, milliliters volume. That is, is the, the, the concentration using the filtration procedure. And as you know, uh, the filtration um, usually have low recoveries. <clears throat> so one of the main advantages using this kit is that you are directly analyzing the 100 milliliters volume sample. So you <clears throat> have better recoveries using this methodology. In that case, as we said before, it's um, crucial the, uh, to temper, to, to pre-warm the water sample. The kit, as you can see in the picture on the right, has less uh, materials and reagent. It's easier than the previous one. And the only material not included in the kit are the Petri dishes that in that case, because we are analyzing a large volume sample, it is highly recommended to use 140 millimeters 
um, plates. So um, in, in, in that case, let me show you how to do the analysis, okay? It's, it's important um, also in, to, 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 to inform you that the, this kit also uses the WG5 E. coli strain because we know that we are analyzing um, drinking water, potable water, but sometimes these waters also contain some background flora. And because we want to remove this interference, the um, in the MSA in that case uses uh, it also contains an analytic acid. Okay, so let's go to see how to perform the analysis of this using this methodology. And one of the green advantage main advantages is that we don't need to do a filtration because we are analyzing directly the hundred milliliters volume sample. So the, the materials that we need are the kit and the petri dishes, the empty petri dishes, because this methodology is based on the ISO, so only uses one layer of MSA because it's a single agar layer methodology. So as we said, the materials are the kit, the petri dishes, and obviously the micro pipette just for the um, con positive control. So here we need the microwave or autoclave, the incubator, the water bath, the incubator with shaking that it's the same that before, the refrigerator and freezer. So here you will have, you will receive for that kit, you will receive two packages. One with the biological materials, with this EPS box, and one box with the media. So, <clears throat> okay. So we have vials with the calcium chloride, vials with the positive control, the bacteriophage VX 174, vials with the E. coli, the MSB bottle and the 2X MSA bottle. So the difference in this kit is that the vials for the positive control and the vials for the E. coli have the, the biological material lyophilized inside the cup. And inside the vial, we have the PBS. So the first thing that uh, we will need to do is to prepare Dina Colon culture, the same as before. So here in the video, we will show you as well to do a blank, positive control and a sample. So we need to pre-warm the MSB. And as I was saying before, very, very important that our MSB and our sample and our 2X MSA are pre-warm at the right temperature, okay? So we will pre-warm our MSP at 36 degrees. And in order to uh, open the vial, what we can do is we can turn the vial upside down and press on top of the vial. And once that is been pressed, we will turn clockwise until we cannot turn it more. Because we need to open what the a piece that is inside of the cup in order to release the biological material. So we will leave it upside down for 10 minutes in order to allow the rehydration. So after that, once that we see our E. coli, it's, it's um, turbid, we will pour all the content in our MSB bottle. And once that it's been poured, we will put in the incubator 
to incubate for two and two hours and a half at 36 degrees, shaking manually or with an automatic uh, shaking rotator, 100 RPM. And the same as before, if we are going to use a straight away the, in a column culture, we don't need to cool it. But if we are going to use it later, doesn't matter if it's 30 minutes later or an hour later, the inner column culture must be cooled uh, quickly in a refrigerator or melting ice. So, meanwhile, we have our inner column culture in the incubator. We will melt the 2x MSA bottles. This is a very rich um, media. So, in order to melt it, it's highly recommended to use the autoclave, a standard cycle, or a microwave. These bottles are prepared to be used in both systems, okay? So it's no problem about that. And it is really important that the 2X MSA, it's mel completely melted, okay? Completely liquid. Once that is melted, we will put in a water bath at 49 degrees. And now we will prepare our samples. So to pre-warm the water samples at 36 degrees, the best way to do it is to put it in a water bath, okay? Really important that they are pre-warm properly. So now we will um, prepare the positive control in the same way that we have opened the E. coli vial. We will allow to <clears throat> rehydrate it for 10 minutes. And after that, we will put one mil of this positive control into the uh, sterile diluent, PBS. So once that we have warm and prepare our positive control. Now we can fixing everything. So we will pour all the vial of the calcium chloride that, as we said, it's to improve the contact between the bacteriophage and the E. coli. We will pour all the content of the inner column culture and we will proceed doing the same for the rest of the samples. So it's important that during this uh, time, maximum, maximum 10 minutes, we cannot exceed this, this time between we are mixing the E. coli and, and our sample and the 2X MSA. So now, we will pour all the mixture that we have of our sample calcium chloride in a column culture in the bottle of the 2X MSA. We will mix carefully because we don't want to generate uh, bubbles and we will pour it bottle into 540 milliliters plate. It's approximately between 40 and 45 milliliters. Doesn't need to be exact, okay? It's important that the layer is even. And we'll proceed the same for the rest of the samples. So we will allow to solidify in a cool surface. And after that, we will incubate, I don't know what is, Yes, after the incubation, we will have these plates. What we need to do is we need to count each plate and sum the results of each plate, of the five plates. So that would be the final result of PFU in 100 milliliters, okay? So as you can see, very easy compared with the previous one, okay? <clears throat> but you are using larger volumes and you are losing more space. Okay? That is one of the main disadvantages of this kit is that for one sample, 
you are uh, plating five plates. So that would be uh, the kits for the, the, the easy kits for the ISO. We also have kits for the US EPA that we are not going to introduce today. And also a part of the full kits, the P1609 and BP1619, sorry, we also have the biological materials. But before uh, moving forward, I would like to introduce our rapid methodology that patented technology completely new. Okay, so what we have done is we have modified the bacterial host strain that came from the WG5, but it's been modified. So when we have in a water sample a presence of a virus like the coliphages, and the coliphage attacks the this E. coli modified, it is released. Um, <clears throat> a compound that changes the color of the media. So if in our water sample we have coliphages, the color would be a change from yellow to blue, and as you know, blue plus uh, yellow, it's green. So you will see a greenish um, color. If our sample remains yellow, means that there is no presence of scolifages. Within this family, we have two products, the qualitative absence and presence kit and the um, quantitative one. The absence and presence, it's mainly designed for uh, clean waters. As you can see in the, in the picture, only uses three components, we have one bottle where inside of the cup, we have the media, the specific media for this analysis, one vial for the positive control and one vial for the E. coli. And as you can see in the, um, in, in, the in the protocol, in the graphic summary is we have our sample that is 100 milliliters volume sample. That is one of the main advantages as well. So you will have the results in 100 milliliters. As always, when we are using these large volumes, really, really important to pre-warm it properly at 36 degrees. So we pre-warm our water sample. And in the meantime, it's been pre-warmed. We prepare the host strain as we uh, see it before in the previous video. So we open the, so we release the, the E. coli that is inside and we leave it upside down for rehydration. During this 10 minutes that is being rehydrated, we can pour our water sample into the BP testing bottle, into the plastic bottle. We will pour all the content of the E. coli. We will turn the cup in order to release the media. And after that, we just need to incubate one hour at 36 degrees and five hours at 30 degrees. After the incub this incubation time, if our sample is still yellow, there is no presence of coliphages. If we still, if change the color to green, we have presence of somatic coliphages and the water is not safe. Why we are using two different uh, incubation temperatures is because, as you know, inside of the family of the somatic coliphages, we have a lot of subfamilies. Each bacteriophage grows at different time and, and different temperatures. So making sure that we have all the coliphages growing in six hours. The combination of the temperatures um, must be used in that way. So this kit, very easy, is just absence and presence, but just some months ago, we launched the new uh, product that is the quantification of the somatic coliphages using this methodology. This is an MPN method. We are all also analyzing 100 milliliters volume sample, but one of the main advantages of this kit is that you can use wastewater 
or potable water. So you have just one kit, one methodology for all types of water, okay? If you are going to use it with water, you will need to dilute. You will need to put one mil in a hundred, for example. So it's very easy, okay? And as you can see here, this is how it looks like, the quantitative rapid, rapid kit. We have a plastic tray, very similar to IDEX, but not the same. Different number of wells, different size of wells, different um, algorithm be behind. Okay, same concept, different type of tray. The bottle, the same bottle that before, the positive control, and the, the same E. coli that we've seen before. One advan another advantage of this kit is you can use it. You already have an IDEX sealer machine. You can use it. Our um, trays are compatible with the IDEX sealer machine. And as you can see, very easily as well. So pre warm the one water sample. And very important, prepare the host strain, as we discussed before. And we will pour the 100 milliliters of volume sample in our bottle. We will pour our E. coli and host strain solution prepare. We will release the media and we will pour all of this content in the plastic tray and we will seal it using our blue mold. Okay, as the, as the tray is different, you cannot use the tray from IDEX. But uh, once that uh, you have poured, you use our blue mold and you can use the IDEX sealer machine. And we will put to incubate for one hour at 36 and 5.5 hours at 30. So here you have two options to read the results. We have our NPN uh, tables. You can do it manually, but also you can do it using our app, taking picture time zero and taking picture um, after the incubation. It gives you the result. The result can be printed in a PDF um, PDF uh, report, or also it can be exported in CSV that is compatible with most of the LIMS systems. This kit um, can uh, must be used between zero and 300 MPN in 100 milliliters. So we are expecting to have higher results we dilute the, the sample, okay? And as, 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 as we said before, this one kit that allows you to analyze water, but also biosolids and um, shellfish. And let me show you just finalizing the presentation because we don't want to extend more time because as you know, more than an hour usually yeah, it's difficult to, to, to follow the, the, the presentation. So here we have a summary. So if you want to do the ISO by yourself, um, you will need to spend time preparing the materials and calibrating the new column culture using the spectrometer that is the right concentration. So as you can see, uh, you will invest a lot of time. You can do the ISO using our easy kits that the materials are already prepared. The Nicolum culture is just the time of the incubation. Okay, and you can see it's it's not a difficult analysis, but, but a little bit tedious, okay? Or you can use our rapid kits that uh, allows you to, to do the analysis very quickly and very easily. So just to Introduce a little bit about Bluefish. Okay, we are a biotechnological company located in Barcelona. We were born as a spin-off from the Barcelona University. And so in our team, we have people with more than 30 years experience in the field of microbiology, environmental analysis, and bacteriophages. And we have a, an important presence around the world with a lot of distributors and um, selling directly in, in, in other countries. So that would be all from me.
So I hope that you find it interesting. And just now, feel free to ask any questions. May I say hi, it's Aliana again from Radacom. Thank you, Nuria, for the amazing presentation and the very interesting insights that you shared with us. Um, so please feel free to ask any questions. Can you hear us? Yes. Okay. They can hear us. Okay, Nuri, I think we have some questions in the chat. Yes. So um what do you mean on how to verify the method? So John, I, I I don't know if you if you can turn on your microphone. Uh, I think they're saying using ISO 29201 and ISO 13843 for the verification. Ah, about the most probable number, yes. Okay, so I understand that you are talking about the, the rapid kits. So at the moment, for example, uh, we, we are in conversations with a certified body. And today we, I have a meeting with, with certified body and, and, and a laboratory that they are going to perform this external validation and the objective is to, to, to get a certification. Also, in Spain, for example, we are going to do an equivalence study using um, around 15 laboratories. So the idea would be uh, to get the, the equivalence study between the rapid methodology and the, and the ISO. I know that this study, it would be just uh, in Spain, but I think that having the certification from the certification body plus this study can give you to the different countries more information to implement this methodology. So the certification body is a uh, certification international body. Okay. So, yeah. Let me know if I respond. Answer, sorry, your question. Thank you. Um, Joanna, the, the Bluefish Easy Kit is uh, the, the BP1601. It's specifically designed for waters that have high concentration of bacteriophages but you can also use it for clean waters. The problem that to using with clean waters, you will need to do the filtration step first because uh, I wouldn't recommend the, to use the BP1601 to analyze a 100 milliliter volume sample. In order to, to, so at the moment we don't have a product for total bacteriophages, so we have somatic and F specifics. Uh, so about if it's mandatory by Greek legislation, I am not 100% sure because that depends on how they are transposing now the European directive. So it's probably something that 
read the com can approach you later on and, and provide the, the, the information. Yes, I, I already passed the presentation to Ridicom, so I think they will be able to provide you the presentation. Uh, and the person who is behind the Xiaomi Redmi has a reply about the Greek legislation that it's been said in 2026, it will become mandatory in Greece. Thank you. Uh, Eight seven two six eight one. Thank you. Um, the Nava lab uh, and bit. Um, Ridicom will be able to inform you about the cost of the each kit. So I think it's better if, if you contact them. Um, you can all you have my details, you can always contact me, but about prices and everything, I will pass your email to, to Ridicom, but if you have technical questions, you can contact me directly always. Okay, Anna, we will we will send, we, we have some, I mean, we have the validation reports for each kit, can be shared with you. So we, we also have a comparative study for the BB1604 that is based on ISO. We asked an external laboratory that is, be, is already accredited for uh, analysis of colifages in, in water to perform a comparative study between the ISO um, and our kit. We can share with you as well this, this, this report to you, but I think it's very helpful to see how, it, how the kit works. And also it's been performed by someone external to us. You're welcome, George. You're welcome, Xiaomi. Thank you, Anna. So if there are no more questions, I think, yes, definitely. We will send the presentation for sure. So Yavana, if you, I think if we don't have more questions, we can finalize the webinar. Last minutes to ask. Questions? Yes, I think if there are no more questions, we could um, let people enjoy their afternoon. Uh, thank you again very, very much. Uh, it was an amazing presentation. And thank you for all the insights that you provided. Um, of course, if uh, people have any questions regarding prices or delivery time or whatever, anything else, they can always contact us. We're always available. Um, yes. thank, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to introduce uh, the amazing world of colleges to this uh, all of these people. And thank you very much to all of the att attendees. And yeah, if there is, there is no anything else. No, I don't see any more questions. Okay.
Okay. Uh, thank, thank you again. Thank you to all the participants. Um, hope to organize something else again soon and uh, have a great rest of your day, everyone. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye, George. <laughs>